Hello, day year five. We are going to continue our science studies. And last time we had quite a lot of knowledge, new knowledge about different famous identified lines, latitudes on Earth. But what kind of areas they go through and across on the planet? Lots of different landforms. We learned about landforms in year three and four as well. So I would like you to use that kind of knowledge too. But of course, we will have some new things. Today, we are going to have a look uh, at these different landforms by using a lot of pictures. And you can continuously work on page 122 in your workbook, where you can find a special map. It's not a real area, it's just a fantasy land, but they listed here a lot of different landforms, namely, they have here slope, plateau, valley, verge, plateau, and chic. You can practice the names, of course. This is why I'm telling you now. Hill, domb, hill range, domb shag, mountain, hedge, mountain range, hedgeshake, peak, hedgehog, delta, delta torkolat, folyó torkolat, estuary, tölcsér folyó torkolat, river, folyó, tributary, mellék folyó, or fatyuag, that's the other term they use for these in Hungarian geology. Waterfall, vizesés, lake, tó, volcano, vulcan, channel, csatorna, island, sziget, gulf, öböl, peninsula, félsziget, source, forrás, reefs, zátonyok, lowland, síkság, desert, sivatag, oasis, oasis. So these are the keywords today. And now as we are checking pictures and images, images, you can just find these areas on the map and write the names there. Another thing you could do is number these and write the numbers on the map. I would be happy if you could write here the Hungarian names of them as well, because you need to know these in both languages. So I'm going to share my iPad screen with you and we are going to go through all the basics of these and while we are listing them you can just find them on this imaginary map so page 122 in your workbook so I hope you are ready so this is the page you have yeah all the names are listed there and you can just find them on this map the first one is a slope. This is a rather steep slope. There are some milder slopes as well. So steep or mild. If you walk in mountains or hill ranges, you need to go up and down on these slopes. Southern slopes in the Northern Hemisphere can get a lot of sunshine, much more than Northern slopes. This is something important. To know. And between hills or mountains, there are valleys. The valleys are formed by rivers or streams. You can see a smaller stream here forming that valley. It's hard to imagine this, but basically the river, the water can destroy stones and rock formations. So it can uh, really easily erode all the harder stones over thousands of years and this is how the area is deepened so it's not the other way around because a long time ago scientists thought in greek times let's say that there are these deep areas and rivers flow into them no they are deepened by rivers and streams so this is a nice valley where you can see the whole thing which i explained and if the stone is quite hard and the neighboring stones are destroyed and there can be a flat area formed, we call these plateaus. You can find some even in Hungary, just in Hungary it's harder to see them because we have more water and we tend to have more plants or forests on top, so it's harder to see. This is why I chose, I picked this drier area, which is more arid. This is a hill, nothing to explain, smaller, 
mountain-like structures, but because they are smaller, we call them hills. Then if there are plenty of hills uh, in a region, we call them hill ranges. This is a mountain here, and again, they form mountain ranges with the tallest parts, which are the peaks. And if we have a look at a river, you can see that when rivers really slow down and they go into smaller seas, then they don't have the energy to get rid of all deposits and little stone particles. So they are there on the riverbed forming these reefs and smaller islands and uh, basically the river has branches and these branches have this special shape and that is called delta named after a Greek letter. So this is the delta mouth of a river. But certain rivers are different as you can see here when they go into an ocean, for instance, where water level just changes regularly on a daily basis, all deposits can be removed by water more easily. So we can have this cone shape much longer than a delta, and the river doesn't have really many branches next to each other. This one is called estuary. Estuary is Tölcsér Torkola, estuary. Uh, the river Danube has delta, I'm going back, yeah, so uh, the river Danube has uh, delta mouth and let's say the river Thames has an estuary, okay, so let's take note of that. Waterfalls are typical where there are harder stones <clears throat> in a region and where a harder and a softer stone uh, basically meat. The softer stone can be destroyed by external forces like ice and water over the years. So this way the harder stone still remains taller, higher, and if there's a river going there, of course, naturally a waterfall is formed. This is a lake, there's land all around it, and the water is not flowing there. A volcano is right here. In Hungary, there are no active volcanoes anymore, but there are volcanic mountains like Matra or Zemplén or uh, even Badacsony. Then there are channels between two bigger pieces of land. This one is the English Channel between the UK and Europe or France. The UK is also in Europe. This is an island surrounded by water everywhere on all sides. And if there's a bigger inlet near a continent, we call these gulfs, which is more protected uh, than open waters. So that was a gulf. This land here is almost surrounded by water on all sides, but still there's this neck region where it is uh, connected to a major piece of land. So we call these peninsulas. In Hungary, we have the famous Tihany Peninsula going into Lake Balaton. And if water appears through cracks in mountains, we call these sources. This is basically groundwater appearing on the surface. So this is a source or rash. Hopefully you can find one in the picture. If you can't find something on this map, then you can just draw it there. Okay, so don't be scared. You can just draw there something and you can just add that feature. And if there are stone formations, particles, deposits under sea level or uh, in a river, they are called reefs, which can be rather dangerous when you travel by ship. And if you don't realize there are reef regions under you, then you can easily damage the side or the bottom of your ship. Lowland, always under 200 meters. In Hungary, we have plenty of these. And dry areas which lack precipitation and they are really drought, they suffer from drought is a desert. And if there's still water at some parts or a river nearby, they can have plants there. 
and we call this an oasis. So we have just completed the most important things about uh, all these landforms. And if we go back, you, hopefully you could find them all here in your book by using this map. And the other side of this page, on page 123, all the landforms are listed. So please uh, find the definitions of the landforms on page 123 in task two and match the definition with the actual landform name. If you completed that, we are going to check uh, one more thing because in Budapest, basically, you can find plenty of uh, areas which are like a mixture of different landforms. I just need to find a presentation quickly. This one. So this is why Budapest is a good example because we have uh, areas here which are rather flat, lowlands. We also have mountains, we also have hills, we have plateaus and rivers and lakes. So everything we talked about can be found here. And basically this is why the capital city of Hungary is uh, right there because there are lowlands and mountains and hills and rivers meeting and this meeting point was excellent for people. Uh, for trade, they could just change items, buy and sell things more easily because from different regions, there are different products, of course, or there were different products. Nowadays, it's not that important, but if we think of the uh, history of uh, Budapest, uh, these are uh, important facts, how the whole thing started. Budapest now is made up of districts. There are 23 of them. The last one joining the city was Shoroksar back in the 1990s only, so it's not that old. And probably there will be some newer districts in the next couple of decades, who knows? So it's getting bigger and bigger. The school is right here in district two, but as you can see, some of the districts are rather big when it comes to size, some of them are smaller. I would be happy if you could find which districts uh, are the first three bigger ones concerning the size and the population. So where can you find the most people in Budapest? Uh, in which districts? Hmm, it's quite interesting to check these data. As we said, Budapest is at the crossing point of different landscapes. So there are lots of different landforms. Uh, what are these? The Great Plain that is symbolized with this GP. Great Plain is a big lowland, basically. The northern middle mountain range, just here in the northeastern part of the city. Uh, and the Trans-Danubian mountain range with Dunazub Mountains, Buda Pilish in the neighborhood, Visegrádi mountain range is not that far. So we can have the hilly areas in Buda uh, there as well. What divides the city into two parts? The river Danube, of course. So we also have a very big river. And the Buddha Mountains is part of the Dudazu Mountains. I just told you that. So that is, a base, that is the base of the Buddha part of Budapest. You can see a drawing of the uh, hillside and the mountains with the Danube here. Uh, and you can just see the letters, not that simple, but you can find all these in the neighborhood. So this is why I wanted you to see this. And some of the names are well known, like Saint Andre, Tétényi Fenshi, but uh, even Estergom is not that far. This is why it was there on this map. But of course, uh, Budapest is, uh, and Buda is just a smaller uh, part or segment of this map here. The white dolomite cliff of Gellért here. So it's a hill, it's under 500 meters. It's just a bit taller than 200 meters. So it is really a hill. It rises above the Danube. 
And there are plenty of sources and springs in the city. Hot water, spring waters gush out of four lines in Buda. This is important for tourism. We have thermal baths and hot water baths that people can enjoy themselves. Plus they can even cure different injuries. Body and soul can heal. And the waters form caves as well, like Palvergi and some other caves you can visit in Buda. Budapest was united in 1873 from Obuda, Buda and Pest. So it's quite old now. It's a cultural, financial and industrial center with around 1.7, 1.8 million people. Plenty of people try to move a bit further away from the city center where there's less noise and pollution. So the neighboring towns and uh, villages are really popular. Shoimar, Natuhachi, Budakesi, Dunakesi, uh, but even Moglod and uh, Siget Sent Miklo. So all the regions uh, around the city are popular because people can have bigger gardens there, less, there's less noise and less pollution. But can you recognize these places? all here i hope you can but i'm not helping you now please ask for some help and try to identify the different places in budapest and the task connected to this is on page 127 task two and three 127 task two and three so today it was quite a lot because we have quite a lot of different landforms in Hungary as well, not just in the whole world. If you think of the whole world, of course, there can be even more. Now, these were just the basics. Plus, uh, I just wanted to check uh, the basics about our capital city as well after learning the landforms. I hope you can finish all this until Friday when we can check some of the workbook tasks. So keep up good work and until then, bye bye.